Hello and welcome to Amigos Retro Gaming. In this, the sixth episode of tricking out the Amiga 2500, I'm going to be making some room for adding in a VGA card for the A2286 PC card. And I'll also be making room for a uh, RS232 serial card so I can plug in a serial mouse. And um, also installing some software just to see how well the uh, PC card runs, um, albeit with its small amount of memory. So uh, first of all, I'm just removing the um, hard drive card here just to um, make some room there. I'm going to be using this hard drive for this project, so I'll remove it from this carrier and connect it up to the accelerator card that you can see there just beside the power supply, just to the left of the power supply. I've attached the hard drive there and um, so I'm removing the um, PC card from the left leftmost 16-bit slot there and that'll free up a bit of room for these two 8-bit slots so I can plug my two cards in. Now the PC card takes up two slots. It doesn't plug into two slots but it takes up the room two slots so I'll be plugging it into the uh, rightmost 16-bit slot that you can see there and um, that'll cover that Zorro slot to the right or it won't allow me to plug anything into that Zorro slot on the right there but it'll free up another 16-bit slot to the left and um, obviously leave room for those two 8-bit slots There's the trusty old Trident VGA card. Uh, it's a 16-bit card, so it'll just sit in that left slot there. This is the uh, serial adapter I'll use. It's the uh, two-port RS-232 adapter. And that'll sit in the right-hand 8-bit slot there. And that'll leave one 8-bit slot to the left there, which I'm not sure what I'll use that for, but um, it's there if I need it. And this will be the Microsoft Serial Mouse we'll use. So I've just turned the lights out here to make it a bit easier to see, but you can see the VGA screen on the right there, that's the one that's running from the bridge board. And I've just reset the machine, you can see the Trident uh, video graphics card there. Uh, pop up on the screen and now it's into what's similar to a BIOS setup screen on the right screen there on the PC card. So um, you can actually use a key combination there to configure the BIOS as such to tell the card what um, uh, floppy drives are attached, you know how much memory is installed, bits and pieces like that. So. Yeah, just did a re, uh, reset, soft reset on the PC there. Righto, time for the software configuration here. The makeab command is a command that creates a hard drive in a file. Uh, so basically, a very similar to a virtual hard drive, if you've ever used uh, virtual machines. You create a virtual hard drive, and it basically is just a file that stores the hard drive and um, so the system's asking for the path uh, and the file name and also the sectors, uh, the head sectors and cylinder options there. The system's now building the hard drive file. You can see the hard drive light uh, flashing away furiously there. So. Um, yeah, the head sectors and cylinders, uh, you know, determine the size of the hard drive, the capacity. So, um, yeah, that's just uh, creating a hard drive of that capacity based on the head sectors and cylinders. And uh, you can see on the Amiga there's not a lot happening there because the display is outputting to uh, the VGA card there. But um, we'll be able to see in the file system here that file name 
So the path was eh1 colon, that's the drive path where the dos underscore c file is stored and that's just the name of the hard drive file that I chose. I've inserted the uh, DOS 6.22 setup disk into the floppy disk drive. It's attached to the bridge board and it's booting from that floppy disk there. So hopefully the DOS 6.22 installation uh, setup program will run, which it looks like it is. It's uh, doing its thing there. So I'll configure a um, hard drive. It'll uh, prompt me to install DOS. I'll just follow through the prompts. I'm sure that um, uh, many people have seen this procedure and if you haven't I'm sure there are plenty of YouTube videos that show the DOS installation procedure. Okay time to install some Wolfenstein here. I've uh, formatted the hard disk on the for the bridge board so that's uh, C drive and I've just inserted the Wolfenstein 3D setup disks so I'll let that run through and um, let's see how Wolfenstein runs on this machine okay just decompressing the files there and I've cut quite a bit uh, from this video because that took absolutely ages I don't know long, how long exactly but yeah <laughs> it's certainly no speed demon that's for sure but uh, anyway let's see what happens here I don't have a sound card hooked up to this machine so we won't hear anything I don't even think the PC speaker will deliver any sound that that's if there is any PC speaker Looks like it's detected 256k of main memory there, not a lot else. Uh, I've cut a little bit more from this too, just to speed things up a little bit. It's not exactly the fastest machine on the planet, that's for sure. We certainly take it for granted these days how fast things are, especially seeing a machine like this extract a uh, small zip file. <laughs> and um, yeah, certainly you realize how lucky we are today to have the speed we've got but uh, looks like it's going to run I remember playing this on my PC back in the day it was pretty amazing at the time I do remember before Doom came out so um, yeah spent a lot of time playing this game. I uh, don't think it was networkable. I, I don't think that feature came until Doom Doom days but um, yeah here we go. So the screen size is, is down slightly. I think that's auto detected. Uh, it's probably just based on the uh, CPU speed and the RAM or lack of RAM I should say or and lack of CPU speed, but yep, it's not overly fast. Although parts of it could still be loading into memory, I guess. Uh, yeah, it's a bit, it's a bit blocky. I would say, you yeah, know, virtually unplayable. But I suspect if I got extra RAM into that. Um, into that system I would see an improvement there. Uh, I do have an IBM um, card, it's an 8-bit RAM expansion card that I installed alongside uh, the bridge board but I uh, couldn't get the system to recognize the card. Uh, not exactly sure what's required to get it to recognize whether it's some sort of uh, software patch or something I have to do in the BIOS. Right, uh, time to install Windows. I tried Windows 3.11 and I think 3.1 and the system I don't think 
Windows 3.1 is compatible with either the CPU or I might not have had enough memory. It was a while ago I recorded this actually and I um, have forgotten exactly why it wouldn't let me install 3.1 but um, I've, I'm putting 3 on version 3.0 on here now so let's uh, see how this goes. I've cut a bit more out of this again. I, uh, I'm sure there are plenty of videos as I say on YouTube on how to install Windows on a, an actual uh, IBM compatible PC but bear in mind this is actually running on an Amiga so yeah we actually got dual screen here so I can use the Amiga on the left screen while I'm doing this it's quite amazing really from memory there's a parallel port and a serial port on the back of the bridge board although couldn't be 100% sure about that uh, but it would be quite interesting to set up a printer and just see whether we get like an old dot matrix L uh, star LC10 I seem to remember being a fairly common model uh, around these parts anyway uh, but it would be pretty neat just to get an old dot matrix set up or even an old laser jet HP laser jet so yeah that might be a uh, subject for another video I think disk swapping time so um, yeah four I think three or four disks on this version uh, I seem to remember Windows 3.11 for work groups had about eight and um, Office back in the day the full professional version of Office I seem to remember was around 28 disks floppy disks 1.44 meg floppies so you know back then when we were building PCs we were uh, having to install Office and we did it manually so you'd have someone sitting there just uh, uh, swapping disks in and out 28 of them to get Office installed and uh, yeah that was back in the good old days let's see how Windows goes fairly slow I would say on this machine yeah time for more editing nice Windows 3 splash screen there hard drive working its way through that Windows install flat out. Now I chopped a big hunk, another huge hunk out of that video there. This thing is diabolically slow. But um, I can't really be too hard on it considering this is probably running in less than a meg of RAM. Um, so yeah, I don't want to be too harsh on it but um, you certainly wouldn't want to be in a hurry that's for sure uh, there's the familiar Windows 3 desktop well familiar to me anyway um, and, uh, and a lot of you out there I'm sure well that was close on 55 seconds to open the file explorer and it hasn't fully opened yet so yeah so that's a uh, semi brief look at the uh, A2286 bridge board uh, installing DOS 6.22 in Windows having we look around there um, I'm sure there's a few more things I could do with this I'm, I would really like to get some more RAM into this machine and maybe you know as I say hook up a printer and um, yeah I'm not sure what else I, I could do with it Networking maybe would be interesting if, if I could find an 8-bit uh, network card around somewhere and put uh, Novell, maybe some Novell networking in DOS or um, if I get enough memory put Windows 3.11 for work groups on and get it on the network that could be quite interesting but uh, yeah I, I hope you enjoyed that video and um, thank you very much for watching.